All right, let's do this. Today we're gonna to be shooting my scenes, which uh, I hope will turn out well. We are also gonna do a couple reshoots of uh, the run that uh, Thomas does. Hopefully I'll turn out better because last time we tried to do it is very dark in camera and my camera cannot pick up that much darkness except for this camera. So we're gonna try to do it uh, again and uh, see if it works. So we are currently trying out something new. We have, uh, we probably should have grabbed a shower curtain, but this was like the second best thing we had on hand. So we have this like um, movie projection. This is light. what I use for outside movie theaters. It's very big. That's what she said. Uh, and white. So we're hoping to, if we can't, um, if we can't, you know, use it as a diffuser, we can at least bounce light off of it. Yeah. Uh, so in theory it should work better, otherwise we're going to see if it does, and if not, we'll see. Yeah. Let's make it work. Yes. This is our Hollywood movie, and we're going to try to make it good. Indeed. We're just uh, kind of, you know, waiting for it to be night, because we kind of got it here early, because I have a, I have my own projects to film, so I, the gracious Nolan Films helped me out with that. Always glad to help. Yes. So... Now that that's done, we can fully focus on this. Sadly, we forgot the skeleton, so we can't do any um, uh, certain scenes, but we can indeed film me dying. Again. Again. Anyways, guys, guys, not even related, but look at that, man. Look at that beauty. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that's a yellow moon. I'm not sure if, cameras, if your camera can actually pick up how good that looks. Neither can mine. But seriously, that's cool. I'm on like 8,000 ISO, so that's why it looks so <laughs> legit. Like, that's how like, you can see everything right now. Anyways, the filming continues. We just did, um... We finally got a good scene going on. Yes, we finally got some good lighting. I would turn my ISO this high, but like, as you can see, the grain is awful. So yeah, either way, um, we're just using a sheet um, for the lights to bounce in all that as moonlight. So yeah, we're gonna keep going. Behind the scenes with Nolan. Welcome to a night. The one time where I get scared of the dark, I don't normally get scared of. We actually have some guys, we actually have good shots that look good. Now we're gonna try to run through a, a, um, a reshoot of Thomas's scenes. See if those look good. Hopefully they will. We're on a good, we're on a good start. Yeah, uh, we're using my uh, this light right here as the beefy boy because. Uh... Yes. Also, I bring my yes. LED light box, which by the way has been such a guide. We're shooting it too bright on purpose so we can color grade later, but we're just making sure it's directional. So this one's like really kind of dim, yes. but then the other one's like, you know, like this. So that way it kind of creates a whole image of, yeah. yeah. Anyways, so yeah, we're doing my walking scene. Just wanted to record some behind the scenes because you know, yeah. behind the scenes are good. And this guy does not know how to remember to film. All right, I am here with director Nolan. Hello, this. So, um, bit of a change of plan. So we originally were going to shoot the coming to the park part two um, during the night, but we actually decided that we wanted to show a bit more of time passing, and because it, we want to actually not be sitting around for like hours because we got like maybe a good 30 minutes to an hour before um we're gonna shoot night scenes tonight but we're mainly gonna be focusing on stuff like um you know we're gonna try and get rid of we're gonna try and move up some of the time so that way we can show more time passing and just not be waiting around doing nothing for like five hours so yeah um we don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, last time we shot uh, night scenes, it freaking sucked. Uh, we'll show some of that footage here. Daniel, what are we doing here again? So, um, tell me again what we're doing here. Beautiful, isn't it? The green. You can almost taste it. Anyway, so, um,. Yeah, so we'll see how this is going. And this is gonna go. Uh, Mr. Nolan, director Nolan man, is uh, setting up the camera. Yes. Yeah. And we're gonna be doing the same scene, but 
a lot better because as you can see you can actually see Hoo -hoo. Not too bad now. yes and this is just kind of our equipment just scatter around we got water we stay in safe and we got an iPad with the updated script because before we were reading an outdated script <laughs> I love shooting films in the back we have Trisha filming us from different perspectives the MVP helping yes. us out when our green screen fell over on top of me Courtesy of me not looking at what the wind directions were. We're gonna try to shoot uh, my scene, as in like, we just shot him doing his uh, part of, I guess like my overwhelming stress of my dream. And now we're gonna be doing my my bit. So he, he just acted his part, I'm gonna be doing mine. Sorry if I, I just wobbled my camera a little bit, but yeah, welcome to Behind the Scenes. I'm pretty sure you've said this a lot of times and uh, yeah. All right. We have, um, we can either do it from two angles. My most, the one that came to mind was just like, uh, kind of like a ground shot and then you kind of crouching down the ground, kind of like no pad out, still kind of like drying down what you see. And then me just like observing from like a bar and then kind of me turn my head. Okay, then... so then you want to posse, so if that would get to the, um, so you want to posse to step over the stick put the camera down as low as possible, do an upward shot, and then we walk into frame, I crouch down, and I'm like, it's a sad sight, man. And then you walk off, and then we cut to the next scene. Because that way we get a cool angle, and we get and we can tell, like, it's, um, we're looking down at the body. And then now you can see me crouch down better. Yeah, that'd be a wide angle. That wasn't what I was thinking, but we could try that. Okay. We'll get that one started, and then we'll do the scene. Alright, recording. Alright, siren head, sinking noises. All right, siren head, um, kneeling scene, take one, three, two, one, action. <sighs> it's a sad sight. These kids die younger every day. <sighs> All right. All right. Want to get that another go? Ended. Oh god, that one's gonna... Yeah, I'm, I need to put like a thing on there to tighten that. Actually, eh, I'm not sure it will work. Eh, it's worth a shot though. No, it's way too small. Small. Well, because I have a wind thing, but it's only for my shotgun microphone. Yeah, this works fine. Okay. I tested it before. Alright, so then we're just gonna walk back. Alright, yeah. you're still recording, right? I no, or actually... We could be in the same spot. It's just well, no, because I, I was just doing it for continuity because we were over here. We were in front of the body. Oh. Okay. All right. So then you're good. Yep. You're good. I'm good. All right. Siren head, kneel, alternate take. Um, yeah. Take, take one. Yeah. And three, two, one, action. It's a sad sight. These kids keep dying younger every single day. Again. Am I trying? Bloopers. Walking? No, bloopers. Didn't you want to record bloopers? Uh, no. <laughs> well, now we're recording bloopers. You see Daniel just doing his thing over there. Not like his friend Thomas just died. <laughs> okay. yeah, good luck doing that. Oh no, Natra has claimed his posse. My posse! <laughs> Shake the tree. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's like Epoxy, yeah. everyone. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to uh, my undying behavior of this movie that's breaking me bone. I want to be done with this. So that way when I look back at it, I'm not going to be depressed. You understand my thought? Thank you. Appreciate it. You, you're... Give me a note. Wait, you don't give me like you don't get it. Or you don't like the movie. Oh, oh yeah. Like, one time I ever had this project, maybe for the same reason he's been having it. I just said, like I haven't tried because I know what. If 
I press the red button, is it going to record again? Yes. yes. So this was the set of Mr. Reynolds' office. Had my boom mic because I don't have a task cam, so I use this. And uh, yeah, there's a clock on the wall from that previous shot. At all these paperwork's. In fact, we just we just shot this scene. So uh, yeah, this is literally all we did. And this is my chair. This is my office chair. I actually use constantly. So yeah. Here is the setup. Uh, Mr. Reynolds is back. Get in, nerd. All right. <laughs> Me not looking at oh, yeah. So, uh, during uh, the making of this movie, you may have noticed that there wasn't uh, a certain character, creature, Siren Head. Where, where was he? Well, courtesy of Zia Productions, he has showed a breakdown of one of the most, um, I'd say, kind of complicated VFX shots that, that he managed to uh, create. So, I'm going to lead you over to him. Hello and welcome to Siren Head Behind the Scenes with your VFX editor, ZF Productions. I am currently recording at almost 10 p.m. at night. Yay. Okay, so as you can see, I have a, a, I have a thingy. I have a thingy Madua. So I'm going to be kind of going over how I'm doing some VFX. And to do that, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to get through the worst and most painful experience ever. Or otherwise known as the most complicated VFX scene on the 6th of October. When this is going to be out on the 22nd. Yay. But that's just because I procrastinated. Anyway, so let me show you kind of some of the basic elements I have here. So first of all. We have this, um, oh, well, this shouldn't be here. 12 seconds later. Sorry, I kind of imported this scene from somewhere, um, f from another scene. Like, I did the movie poster, so it's kind of all over the place. This is our Siren Head model. It's not bad at all. I actually really like it. Let me uh, slap some texture on it. So, first of all, I'm just going to do that. Yay. And then I guess I'll just do something at night so it kind of looks right. So this is our essentially our Siren Head model. It's not the highest quality po uh, model that you could possibly get. Like it doesn't have like individual like like you know it doesn't have ambient inclusion and all that, which probably is because of the way I textured it and things kind of look weird sometimes, especially like over here. But yes. Um, it's, it's, it's fine. Like it works really good. Like for instance, you know, I have all this that I can do. Um, I actually, I actually kind of used Mixamo. Yeah. Mixamo. It's a plugin that you can have for blender, um, to kind of retexture it. I mean, to redo the rigging. And if you don't know what rigging is, essentially it's just, uh, what moves this around a rig just kind of grabs the skeleton and moves it in different ways. So for instance, R now, boom perfect you know so this is how i kind of you know do the animation and all that so how i had to start all of this is i had to go into motion tracking now i've already done this but essentially i have to just get the lay of the land here i have to kind of figure out okay what's going on and now i actually haven't done this yet but i also have to grab three of these tracks and get the floor to work. Now, this is so hard to do most of the time. Oh, okay. That's why. So, it'll probably become more visible once I get done with all this. So, in order to grab the, um, get the ground to be the same as this, I have to grab two of these, no, three of these, and then go over here and click floor. Now, as you can see, um, cause you, this is my reference that is not all correct. 
and that's because Blender hates my soul. So I have to continuously try this. So that gave me some better results. A few moments later. So the way that we kind of worked it out is a person should only come up to about here on Siren Head. So that means that he actually needs to be about this big. Which you can see how it can become really hard to animate him since only his feet and the very tips of his hands are in the shot. But, but the reason how I know that, you know, that's the scale. If I go to my raw clips, for instance, uh, let's look at this one. Nothing so uh, this is one of the shots we got. We, we, we set up lighting and this is the test scene. So I know about, you know, yay big and all that. Actually, no, that actually looks to be roughly the same scale. That little me is currently coming up to about in the same spot. Is currently coming up to about here-ish. Now he's only supposed to be fifty feet, but the thing, the way I kind of worked it out is one of his feet is probably the length of a human in order to support being that high, so, uh, you know, that big. So that's kind of how I roughly do it. So I guess I could decrease it a little bit. It's just about playing with it because you can play with the scale a little bit. So I guess that is fine. But you can't play with it too much because there's a – like I'll be honest. If you pay attention to the the size consistency, it will likely be off. I'm telling you right now it is off because we kind of just guess to me at this point. Or at least I do. So a lot of this. Anyways, digre I, I'm digressing. Moving on. So he his whole thing is going to be like he's going to be behind here. All right, that's where he starts. Now, I now need to grab a different scene of him just of me running and doing this. Now, I have multiple different ones, but I think the one I'm going to use is the one where I don't jump because I need that kind of reference in the stopping point. I think the stopping point is like about right here where I get hit, but I'm just going to
Alrighty, welcome back to, um, ZF does no idea what the heck he's doing. So, it has actually been a few days, um, had to take some time away. So I might have, I think I improved the animation a little bit. I rendered it out, um, and I guess I can show you what that looks like if it's still here. Yeah, so... This grows for some reason. You're not really going to see that, so I don't really care. And then... I kind of changed uh, it a little bit from that, but that's what we got after animating it. So, I made sure that this was no longer clipping and all that. I think the speed and all that's fine enough for now. Um, we can always work on it later. So now we're going to work on Thomas here. So, this is the 3D scan we got a while ago. It's not fully accurate, but I just made a few changes to the one I actually am going to use. Bye. All right. So, now they're roughly... All right. Now they're roughly the same. Now, as you can see, this does not look like me uh, in the film. In fact, as you can see, we're in completely different colors, right? But I think it's close enough for now. It's still me. I'm still wearing red, and in the one that I have edited, I edited it so that way it looks a bit better. And then... So the impact starts about here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to delete him, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to, and we're going to match the animation. I mean, or match uh, the positioning.
Unfortunately, that's all I have for uh, behind the scenes footage. I am not very good at shooting behind the scenes uh, for the particular reason that I took more thought of uh, creating the... There's a difference between having to create the movie and shooting the BTS part of it. Um, but as you can see, Zia Productions was able to lend it over his hand. I shot a few bits of mine, not very much, because that's because I was focusing on one project over the other one. But courtesy to him, if you really want to check out his stuff, I highly advise you to go over to his channel. And to everyone who joined the premiere for Siren Head Part 2, thank you so much. It It is like one of the best experiences I've had as a, uh, a filmmaker, aspiring filmmaker. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for... Uh, joining me. It has been a blast having to shoot this project. But until then, thanks for joining me on the be uh, on behind the scenes of Siren Head Part 2, and I'll catch you the next time. Bye-bye.